Hello and welcome. Today is Monday, the 7th day of August 2017, and let's do technical analysis on NEO. I mean, what's a NEO? Uh, I don't know. It used to be called AntShares, and I loved that name, and I really have to reference past tense loved in the sense AntShares no longer exist and it was something else because pretty much about two to three seconds before they changed the name of it over on bitrex i happen to go to the ans page just take a look at it see what uh what was going on with it and i noticed i get blah blah sell order canceled buy order canceled come up like what's going on i'm wondering my it's going off my mouse. This is like, why are the instant sell orders coming in? And then I had about five different orders, both buy and sell. And then next thing you know, I have three orders, two orders, no orders. Okay, I'm trying to uh, put in different other buy orders, but I can't even find any bidder ask prices anywhere. And then I noticed, okay, they're probably changing it over to this code name. And they did. Now notice the move in here. I don't know how big the order books were, but they're a lot thinner now. Every order was taken down. So therefore, you have to expect big moves to start because when this thing reloads under code NEO, there isn't a buy order, there isn't a sell order available. You can't do anything, but once a sell order or buy order comes in and it worked out that people put some higher sell orders in to an area where I did have one at 53.3. That's where I had, but it got canceled, of course. But I did have an order in at 53.3. Obviously, many other people did as well. And because of the shortness of orders, and this is the one minute time frame on NEO, not Ant Shares. It had this wild move and then corrected back to where it's been trading from. As far as an updated one minute time frame, it won't look that much different. And it shows a interesting one minute pattern coming back down in here, breaking out. Is a new name bullish? I don't know. The actual market in itself has a, a very interesting situation. And I have to show it to you on Bittrex because their longer term data isn't available on TradingView, nor would it be that great when you're talking about the extreme movements in which it had. But this is a perfect example of you're breaking a key level. And as the market's going higher, you don't, don't want to be a buyer because you want to see it a pull back or a settle down a little bit and it's already pulled back it has settled down and you most certainly would rather be a buyer now in here than you would be back at this point with that being stated it could very easily come back to these key previous resistance points and still be bullish definitely even towards the uh, 300,000 number as it would make a higher low to the one at the start of or end of July. When plotting in the 18 average, I can see that it came back to the 18 average of lows a few days back and has been leaving it. The 18 average of highs is in at 379. So when we talk about how it is a little overextended short term and uh, there's definitely buying areas available cheaper but it's a situation where i can't tell if it's better to buy now or buy uh, cheaper it could very easily break this point and do this sort of thing now i think if you don't have a position uh, what i would do is I would buy now, I would buy some down towards here, especially tonight because the order books are going to be a lot more thinner. That if anyone's looking to sell a little more aggressively instead of bringing the market down from maybe 507 to 460 because of the less amount of orders on there, 
it would go down to that 400 number. Same can be said about this lower end, maybe at around the 35 or so, which would bring it into the 18 average of close area. That instead of bringing it to like 42 or so, they, they might bring it down a little bit more. Again, 33, 34. It's just, just different possible ideas because whether this thing can go up about 30 or percent or have the same equivalent move to the downside i really don't know and there's definitely decent risk when you're buying something when it's had this kind of gain the june volume high was very big and now we're seeing big volume but not quite as big to me i indicate this as a bullish signal I would expect that if there was sell-offs for it to come on a lower volume probably volume uh, in towards this area here but definitely higher than what it was going within the correctionary sideways phase as when you have a key break of this point what do we know about technical analysis we or at least within these cryptos when you break key points you have tremendously large moves Therefore, I would expect the same here again when this is significantly higher than the area it's at now. It's going to go way, way, way big to the upside, I would think. Just like when Bitcoin broke 3,000, like minutes, minutes, it goes up over 10%. So you would think the same thing here that in no time at all, it wouldn't surprise me if this thing went to like 650 to 700 on the break. Of course, I'm not making any guarantees. It's just the types of things I would expect. Thus, my playbook. Oh, I don't got sell orders in. I got to put them in again actively. There won't be any selling at 540 or 550 or 580 or even 620. Not until at least between 650 to 700 would I want to start selling, especially since when you break a key point, and I hope I would rather this to sell off and come back down here. Establish this resistance. This is what I hope. What happens is what happens. I want this so one, I can pick up some buy orders that I have, well, I'm going to add the 40 and some other ones in, but the, I'll pick up some of the buy orders. But more importantly, strengthen this level. And then maybe in time, like hopefully like in a couple of weeks or a week and a half, break out past this level. Like I stated, not sell in those areas. Rather sell in the six, high 600s to 700 starting then. Realizing that if I'm selling at 650, 675, that it's pretty decent profit with the intention of buying back at 500. That's the key. Because oftentimes markets will come back to where they came from. Not always. Not always. See, see if I was thinking the same thing here, I would have said, you know what, I'm going to wait to sell here with the intention of buying back here. Uh -uh, didn't happen. So you sell some more here with the intention of buying back. Uh, Again, it didn't happen. Then you sell here with the intention of buying back. Okay, that one happened. And then if you were lucky enough to sell at this top, maybe you would have bought back, say, uh, maybe here. And then, you know what? You could easily, after buying here, you could have sold here. But then you get to the situation, would you have hit this low? Maybe your buy order was here and you hit. Maybe it was here and you hit. And maybe it was here and you missed it. It's all part of the game. But basically what this means is, yes, I'll look to sell between 650 and 7. But if that sell uh, doesn't work and it keeps going higher, then I'm going to wait a little bit more, maybe closer to 8 to 850. And then close to the million number after that before looking to sell again. Because the volatility is extreme. How much of a major upside move does it have? Well, it's like number 10 on the market cap. Or number uh, number 10, Neo. There we are. Its market cap is 772. 
So if it were to get to where Ripple was at number three, and that's a huge move to do such, it would have to go up pretty much around 10 times higher from where it stands right now. I will tell you this. This is a crazy game in crypto land. And when it's all said and done, the safest one for me is physical silver easily bought through Bitcoin. Then Bitcoin becomes the safest, the second safest or the safest actual real cryptocurrency. Because as far as portfolio management, it's an enjoyable thing to buy silver with Bitcoin. But if you're holding any other tokens, the moves up and down you can get are extreme. Bitcoin Cash is having a 16% update, but that's after it fell about 75, 80% to the downside. Ripple, oh my goodness, the up and down moves it's had. Ethereum, same thing again. You get more volatile moves when you're talking about the other coins. And then when you go way down in here, you're talking about coins that are going to have much more extreme volatility. As well, I look at the fact that we have a total of, well, you can't read it. It's 841 different coins available. To me, these high numbers aren't sustainable, which means a lot of these are probably not going to end well. But to me, that's what makes these, the Bitcoin, the Ethereum, the Litecoin, for me anyway, Ethereum Classic and Dash, Monero to be what I consider a safe haven compared to other cryptocurrencies. I don't think they have as much downside movements, but I think they could be very volatile. Litecoin is more of the volatile nature of such. All right, take care. I really don't have much more to talk about. Just wanted to go over the new code, Neo. Ants, you know what? Ant shares. Ants are one of the most beautiful creatures on the world. They're very strong, efficient workers. They are amazing animals. And I love the name Ant shares, but I have to say goodbye. Take care.